In today's News Daily video, I'm going to focus on three stories today. They will be on Tagliafico and is he the next alternative to Ben Chilwell and Alex Tellez? I'm going to talk about Jaden Sancho. Who is he going to sign for? Are Man United leading the race? Do we still have an opportunity to sign the player? And of course, to end with things, I'm going to talk about this Emerson vs Lampard feud. What's happening? And is Emerson definitely leaving at the end of the summer? It's looking really possible. But anyway, you guys, I'm in the FC. This is Blue Lion CV. And before I get into things, today's video is brought to you by the One Football app. Now, as I've been saying, we're all self-isolating at this point in time. I know that every single day we need to find new creative things to just, you know, help with the boredom. We're going to be at home for a long time, you guys. So if you need help fighting the boredom, why not give the One Football app a download, you guys? You know, try out yourselves, it's free. You'll find a link below in the description. And now we get into things starting with the first story of the day. And I want to talk about Tagliafico and what the reports are actually saying. Now, from the reports that came out today, it's looking like Tagliafico might be our third viable option behind Ben Chilwell and Alex Tellez. With Ben, reports are starting to suggest that we're getting put off the price tag that Leicester City won for their player. I mean, we know that he's going to cost a ridiculous amount of money between 60 to 70 million. So knowing us, it makes sense that we are going to look at alternatives. Alex Tellez is a realistic option. He's around 30 to 40 million in valuation. However, reports are that we are now looking at Tagliafico as that backup option in case moves for Ben or Alex Tellez obviously fall through. Now reports say that we're looking at Tagliafico as a more affordable option over those two players. And even though he's quite small in height, they like that defensively, his game is really good. And he has a very determined attitude that would really complement the team at this point in time. And naturally, being a teammate of Hakim Ziyech, they could really help each other acclimatize to London, to a new league, to a new structure. And if you're really thinking about things, then Tagliafico seems like a very realistic and smart option. Now, you guys are on this channel that I really like the player. You know, I've always seen these Maxwell vibes in him. And if you're asking me, I think he's one of the most well-rounded fullbacks out there. Now, it's mad because he doesn't get that much hype. And that's naturally because he is playing in the Eredivisie with Ajax. So there isn't too much attention with that league. But when you break his game down, when you see how he performs in Europe, and that's always a really positive sign to really give you an indication in regards to how well a player can perform at the very top, at the highest level, Tagliafico does that every single time. Now, stats-wise, it's looking like he was the best defender in our UCL group this year. And defensively in the Champions League, his game went up a completely different level. I was so impressed with him this year. And it really just made me feel confident behind the player. And if you're asking me, out of Tellers, out of Ben, I would love to sign Tagliafico for the club. Not only is he affordable, not only is he well-rounded, I think that he would acclimatise really well to the Premier League. You know, he speaks English, he knows Hakan Ziyech. I think his game would suit the team as well. Very good on the ball, very good at playing out from the back. And when you see how he performs in this Ajax system where it's really focused on that counter-pressing style, that's what gets the best out of Tagliafico. You know, he kind of reminds me a tiny bit of like an Ashley Cole type of fullback. And of course, if I'm seeing them type of comparisons like that, and I'll give you guys an example. A comparison I mean is that tenacity in the tackle. You know, he really gets tight and he closes down the distance with his marker very quickly. He goes in hard, he wins the ball cleanly. And these are the type of attributes that I do want to see in my fullback. Now, even though players like Alex Tellers might be better in the offensive phase of the game, as an overall fullback, if you're asking me, I think Tagliafico is a better option than Tellez because defensively and offensively and on the ball, he is so well-rounded at 27 years old at a very affordable fee. Why waste time talking to Porto? You know, why waste time talking to Leicester City? It feels like with our current good relationship with Ajax, this deal could be very smooth and very easy. Maybe we could potentially involve Castillo in a move for the player. That would be great. And in that sense, Ajax have already made replacement for the player. So all I can say is at this point in time, it's in the comment section below. I'm going to pose this question to you guys. I'm going to create a poll as well. So make sure you vote above. Out of Ben Chilwell, Alex Tellers and Tagliafico, which of these three fullbacks would you love to see at left back for us next season? 
Make sure you vote you guys and on that point we now move on to the second story for the day and I want to talk about these Jaden Sancho reports. Now the reports today came from Germany and from England. They came from Sport Build and they came from the Evening Standards and I'm going to start off with the Evening Standard first. They're reporting that Man United are currently leading the race to sign Sancho but I don't know you know the cynical part of me you guys I'm seeing Sancho, I'm seeing Chelsea, Man United, transfer, battle. I'm seeing all these like high keywords and you know <laughs> keywords are very important today you guys that's how you rank high with the algorithm that's how your articles or whatever get seen by the millions that's how you get your articles to get pushed out by the algorithm even more and during these like slow news weeks does it surprise me that maybe journalists are looking to fit in as many keyword phrases as possible to rank high it wouldn't surprise me but you know what, I'm going to leave that cynical attitude behind me just for a second, just so I can keep things a bit objective and fair. I feel like there's an alternative way to interpret the situation. Now, reports keep suggesting that Man United are leading the race to sign Sancho without there being any context or real insight to tell us why. And if you're asking me, I guess it's the fact that United are the only club right now moving aggressive, you know, trying to be vocal, being public with their interest in the player. And I guess you could say that they are leading the race because they're the only ones doing anything at this point in time. Who knows? The article does state that United feel confident though that they can not beat us to the signing of Sancho because they signed Lukaku and they signed Alexis Sanchez beating us to their signatures. So who knows, there could be something there. You know, I've always been told that with Man United, you need to respect them and that's because of the money they have. I mean, honestly they are so rich man united they can offer players any wages they want i mean look at the alexis sanchez deal he's close to earning half a million a week for what you know it's absolutely crazy but now we move on to what build had to say and this is where things started to become a bit more interesting surprise surprise another article that doesn't have too many paragraphs it doesn't have too much context or insight however their leading headline is that we now are really actively pursuing the player and we are currently dealing intensively at this point in time to try and sign Sancho for the next window. Now, could this be interpreted as us maybe reacting to the pressure that Man United have been applying to sign Sancho? Well, I guess so. You know, United have been vocal, they've been aggressive. And to sign these types of players, that's the energy that you need to have. Now, I remember back in the day when we were beating off interest from Man City and from Man United when it came to this signature of reading Hazard, we were able to pull through and sign them. So if you're asking me, I do not see United as the favourites for anything at this point in time. I don't even think Sancho knows just yet if he wants to stay at Dortmund for another season or maybe go back to the Premier League. I mean, Sancho's only 19, 20 years old. He's got all the time in the world to move to the Prem. I'd imagine that he wants to win something with Dortmund alongside Haaland first before testing himself somewhere else. Still though, you guys, I can imagine that there's going to be even more reports coming out. You know, now that football has been temporarily postponed at this point in time, you know, this is a perfect opportunity for clubs to talk, to make deals, to, you know, speak to reps and agents, to really just find out where people's heads are at. I don't know why I'm saying where your head's at. You know, <laughs> I blame Love Island for that. Like in real life, when does anyone ever say where's my head at? I, I guess I finally found use for that word, you guys. But you know what? From this point in time, I'm going to leave this question to you. In the comment section below, do you still feel confident that we can sign Sancho? Do you want him to sign? Do you feel like it would be irresponsible to spend so much money on one player? Or do you think we should focus on different areas in the team first? Let me know below. And you guys, to end with the story today, I'm going to focus on the final one. And that's on this Emerson Lampard feud that's happening at this point in time. Now, surprise, surprise, the report is coming out from Italy, from Tuto Sport. And they're reporting that we've set a valuation between 25 million euros to 30 million euros for Emerson. The article states what every one of us knows. We are actively pursuing new left back options to act as replacements for Alonso and for Emerson. The article states that Emerson would be interested to return back to Italy. And this probably comes at the perfect time because, you know, just a few days ago, Roberto Mancini, he came out to talk about the Italian national team and their issues at left back. Now they're looking for a long-term success in that role. And Mancini spoke about Emerson saying that he likes the player a lot, but he hopes to see him return to Italy where he can play more and get more game time. With Alexandra not being the same, 
colossus that he used to be, Juventus want genuine competition for the left back role, Emerson vs Sandro. But before I move on to give my thoughts and opinions, there is some more context behind the story. Today it did come out that Emerson isn't too happy with Frank Lampard. Emerson thinks that Lampard is a bit of an army sergeant in the sense that he's too controlling, he wants things done his way and only his way and this probably comes as no surprise because Emerson hasn't played a game since January. It's looking very likely that the player will leave at the end of the season and if you're asking me this is a natural byproduct of football. It doesn't mean that any one of these guys is the bad guy, Lampard isn't the villain, I don't think Emerson's the villain either. I think it comes down to both parties not finding that professional common ground. Maybe Emerson feels like as a professional player, he needs a different type of coaching to get the best out of him. And it's clear that Lampard doesn't see Emerson as his go-to left back he needs. And it's obvious that Emerson is out of Lampard's plans for the season. It's looking very likely that he will go to Italy once the season does end. Juventus look very likely, you know, Sari loves players that he's worked with previously. And I guess the only real shame is that when Emerson does leave, I don't think we ever saw the real Emerson. We never saw it. We saw glimpses of this this season, especially at the start of the season. We cannot forget that statistically for the first like five, six weeks, he was by far the best fullback. No one got past him defensively. He had a 100% like tackle success rate. You know, he was really impressive, but those injuries came. And if you're asking me, that's probably where the relationship between him and Lampard ended. You know, Emerson was rushed back twice. Both times he broke down. And since then, he found it harder to get back into the team. This happens all the time in football. It's best that Lampard gets the left back that this team needs and that Emerson finds happiness with a different club. And boys, on that note, I'm going to wrap things up and keep things moving. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. I'm the EFC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll see you guys later tomorrow for some more videos. And to let you guys know, there is going to be a live stream hopefully tomorrow. So I'm going to give you guys the announcement at some point later tomorrow. So until then, I'll see you guys later for some more videos.